Patty. So if you hear me snuffling, it's because it's winter time and I've been taking antibiotics, which is making my immune system weak. So I have some sniffles, my nose been running and my voice is hoarse. So I apologize in advance, but I'm going to do a blog reading today because some time ago, a few months ago, um, I did a reading on Prince York. Um, so I want to read that, that blog first, and then I'm going to do a new reading. All right, let's get started. So I will link this blog in the description. Oh, and on, I call him Mr. York, but his name is Prince York. Back then, I didn't even know who he was. All right. So I put my first impression of him was not good because he just seems vain and disconnected from spirit. He answers her questions generically. Like he couldn't bother to pay attention to her genuinely. I have to admit, I only watched four minutes of the video and have no interest in watching the rest. If the cars show a different opinion, I will go back and watch the video. So the first question I ask, what type of person is Mr. York? He is an opportunist and he doesn't mind hurting people are even ending their lives to get it. If you become too much of a burden to him, he will end you. Yeah, I was feeling very strong about that. I was feeling like he have bodies. He has blinding ambition. And what keeps him up at night is missed opportunities because he is always thinking about the next bag. He is not a good person and he lacks empathy. He also feels entitled because of because of the family. Which I remember some people comment in the comments, which I will read at the end. And they told me more about his family. Now, matter of fact, if y'all want to just follow the link and y'all could go to the comments and read it. It's something about his upbringing that made him cold. He is jaded. He has an unwavering victim mentality. I asked for spirit to show me something good about him. And he does have a few family members, maybe even children that he cares about. And he uses them as an excuse to be so ruthless in his pursuit. Damn, that was some good writing right there. <laughs> so detail. You know what? I feel like I explain myself better through my writing because I have time to think versus when I'm speaking. So, but speaking is easier. So the next question I ask, what are his intentions with Nateri? He is attracted to her and wanted her in the past. He felt abandoned by her at some point and he is using this as an opportunity to get her back. I keep hearing hotel beef. <laughs> it's something going on in that community where they compete and use the women as trophies like, look, now I have your girl, which makes me better than you, which we are seeing now because she wants to follow me. It's toxic and childish. He doesn't trust her because of something from the past or someone she dealt with in the past. The next question I ask, what would be the outcome of their relationship? Ooh, I forgot I even wrote about this. Let's see here. Nateri will wise up. <laughs> And in the situation, she will find out he is not who he says he is. Damn, bear. Damn. 
I was just going to say I was good. I am good, though. I am good. Reading is over. Because I be forgetting stuff that I said in readings. I be forgetting it be this detail. He doesn't even have as much money as he says. Ooh. And definitely not a real spiritual guru. Ooh. It could also be a situation where he he will ghost her after getting what he wants, making her fall in love and hurt her because he wanted to hurt her. And that was the whole point of him taking her back. He wanted revenge. Advice. I put advance, but I meant advice. Advice to Nateri from Spirit. She needs to practice more self-love and forgiveness. She is trying to right her wrongs in the wrong way. She can easily become a spiritual junkie and get lost in people's lights and become misled. I feel like Nateri is a younger soul who recently started to incarnate and have only lived a few lives. She needs to get away from this man. He is a different type of devil. Mm. In some ways, he is worse than Elio because he doesn't value lies as he will end it. Damn, man. And then I put, let me add a disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes. Nateri, get away from this man. <laughs> oh, boy. And I wrote this on September 26, 2020. All right. So the first, the first question I ask is, how do Nateri feel about the TKO being with them, seeing their life and stuff? Now, Spirit was already chatting to me about this before I even pulled the cards. And I've seen a few visuals. To be honest, I think that TKO may play around with certain type of drugs that Nateri ain't, she ain't about that life. Like cocaine and stuff like that. She ain't about that life. But she is starting to see things that are red flags to her. I don't really think she's going to be in this situation too long. Um, right now her ego and her pride is kind of, and you know what? Spirit is saying that Sevi, Seven, she might even speak about TKO and what she learned about his life. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, child. Yeah, because I think that Seven and, um, Nateri seen some of the same things. And y'all know Alihio gonna make her do it. He gonna make her do it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned cocaine. I feel like he be doing certain drugs that's like they 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 have that real like party life, like going to the clubs, living it up throwing money at strippers and stuff like that so they have that type of life and i'm not judging it it's just they that type of souls they love that type of experience you get what i'm saying so nateri she trying to fit in but she's not the stuff that that york dude said he he hit on some good points. He just the wrong messenger because he doesn't care about her. That's just everything he said and everything was a reflection of his own bruised ego. But he did state some facts. Now, but he did hurt Nateri. Um, and he wouldn't let her talk on that. So, oh y'all, I smoked sativa this time, and it's like my first time having a very strong sativa blend, and I'm feeling like 
very energetic. All right. <laughs> she ain't happy with TKO. Like, she really questioning her decisions right now. She just really like, what the fuck I got myself into? What do I got myself into? Why do I keep doing this? Because baby girl is lost. She is lost. Um, she is insecure. And she really do need to have more confidence in herself because she's powerful. And you are a lot of time, if a powerful person is insecure, they're going to be manifesting struggles in their life because they powerful manifestors. She the type of spirit that she believe and want. So, um... All right, I had to pause for a minute. Okay, where was that at? Um, so yeah, she um is manifesting these scenarios in her life because she's repeating a lesson. You don't need no master teacher. Life itself is a teacher. Just live your life. You know, she keeps looking for somebody to worship. And, she, you know, she got that Capricorn energy, so she want to ground it in his 3D. So she looking for a man that she could worship. But she's a goddess in herself. She needs to be giving herself that own worship, feeding her own light. But she's instead of trying to give it away to somebody, and they keep abusing it, she got to stop that. So she gonna keep having these situations, but spirit is saying that TKO may be the final straw. After that, she may come to a learning art and understanding that she needs to create her own. She's supposed to be a teacher, and she out here looking for a master teacher. She needs a no. Mm -mm. So, no, nah, she's not happy with TKO. She's seeing a lot of things that she don't like. TKO is not as stack. It's something about the way that he makes his money. Um, I don't think that she agrees with. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to speak on that, child. I'm going to let y'all wonder about that. Oh, I'm just pulling all reversals on that ass. She is ready to go already. <laughs> she is, oh my goodness. Mm-mm. It's some toxic behaviors. I do feel like um, TKO and his girl, like they might fight a lot. Um, <laughs> Ooh, it's hard to explain like what I'm laughing at. It's like the way that I view life. So when I picture her, it's almost like, she's still a child or whatever and then she get into these situations that she has the ability to see it coming but she um don't listen to her intuition a lot not as well as she should which i do understand then i done that so, um, and she's about tired just in general. She's about tired of going through this same cycle. I do feel like TKO may be the final straw. Maybe after that, 
she would actually start doing her purpose. <laughs> Look at this card. Your childlike in some ways, you still have much to learn. Worry and fear blocks positive action. Don't submit to others. Oh my, my bear spirit. Thank you. Don't submit to others rules and demands of conformity. You do not recognize the danger you are in. You are close to ruin with crazy decisions, reckless actions, and foolish choices. Your ideals are not sound and may lead to catastrophe. <sighs> All right. Well, I don't even need to pull no more cards on that. Let's go on to the next question. So I asked, like, what happened between her and Mr. York? I'm just going to read this first card that I pulled. Refers to a man under 40, attractive, prone to jealousy and mood swings, unfaithful in love, not capable of commitment to one person, dishonest, lives in a fantasy world. In love, he will break your heart. He may cause you to develop a long-term distrust of men. Yeah. Um, he hurt her. He may have even put his hands on her, like grabbing her around the neck. Um, he lies all the time, like even when the truth is right there in people faces, he's a major gaslighter. Um, let's pull some clarity for this one. Oh, y'all know what? I forgot to take pictures with the first pile, and I was planning on taking pictures. My bad. Ooh, stuff like that aggravates me. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't. Mm. I feel like he really tried to break her mind. She has a strong mind and he was trying to break it. He gaslighted her intuition to sleep. Um, the terror didn't like the fact that she couldn't tell him nothing. You can't tell York nothing about himself, even when you correct. Which is damaging to him because if he did actually listen to women that cared about him, he would be in a, a lot better position right now. Yeah, he make money. Some of it is illegally. But, um, he, um, also make bad decisions, S decisions that his wife and girlfriends see him do and try to tell him about it, but he just doesn't listen. And he doesn't listen to your feelings and thoughts and stuff like that. He only listen to manipulate, but he doesn't listen to understand it. And he doesn't have as much money as he say he does. He's not balling like that. He's actually concerned about money right now. Um, I feel like COVID hit him kind of hard, like really hard in the pockets.
I need some clarity for this Ten of Cups right here. Um, I'm feeling like that represents when TKO enter. I think TKO enter like at the near end of Nateri and York relationship. And at that time, it helped her to get out of. Mm -hmm. It helped her to get out of the situation with York. Um, I think that Nateria may have been a little financially dependent on York when she was with him. So she met TKO and she did feel like it was like love and stuff. And yeah, he made her feel good about herself and she did like the fact that he was a bit possessive but it's starting to change it's starting to change because at first i think they was like just chatting like online and stuff like that and the thing with tko is that he do know how to empathize with people he do he's not like a narcissist york and alihio is but not TKO. He do know how to empathize and listen and actually give you a sense of emotional fulfillment. But his lifestyle can be viewed as toxic to some people. And I just think that Nateri is not fit for that lifestyle. She thinks she is, but nah, she just trying She need to take time and heal. Um, she keep looking for a man to heal her. And she need to find a way to heal, her, heal herself. Yeah, so at the end of her, so this is exactly how it's playing out here. When she was thinking about leaving York, she came into TKO. And then they thought it was love or whatever, lust. And yeah. I mean, no, nah, I ain't gonna tell us because I already told it. <laughs> After that, she got with TK TKO and she felt like he was this king of pentacles. And he felt like she was the queen of wands because he really do find the terror to be extremely attractive. Like, he also loves the way she smell. Uh, he also loved the way she dresses because he's, their style is different, but he likes hers. He do. Ooh. Yeah, but it, it didn't turn out like she wanted it to. And it's not going to. Because she realizing that this ain't for her either. So. Alright, y'all. Y'all stay blessed. And I hope y'all enjoy the reading.